Hello everybody, I'm Ayin and now I'm going to talk about our paper entitled as New First Order Secure AES Performance Records and which is a joint work with Dushan and Amir. ASICs and FPGA are two main hardware platforms where in ASIC a circuit is realized by logic gates in transistor level. However, FPGAs are completely different platforms and the design should be realized with its building blocks like lookup tables, boxes, block memories, and other building blocks. In this work, we focus on AES as the most widely used block cipher in literature and industry. We know that in the context of the network security, we need high throughput AES implementations. We need high throughput design to support a high data rate, efficient AES implementation, since AES has a key role in the most of the protocols in network security. To answer this demand, many companies use FPGAs to support such a high amount of data rate. There is a considerable body of work on sidechain secure AES ASIC platforms, which are not necessarily optimized solution for FPGAs. Some studies consider uh, FPGAs, but their purpose design have a very low throughput or not high secure design. So our goal is to introduce a high throughput side channel secure AES, which is optimized for FPGA platforms. FPGAs are designed to be reprogrammable. We make them a perfect choice if system should be updated when necessary. They also meet critical timing and performance requirements with parallel process. In this talk, I focus on Xilinx FPGAs and mainly a Spartan C family, even though our constructions are general and can be implemented on every FPGA, as all FPGAs in other brands also have uh, basic building blocks like BRAMs or Blockmores. As you can see in the figure, each Xilinx FPGA contains a matrix of configurable large blocks called CLB, whose number depends on the device size and model. Each CLB consists of lookup tables, flip-flops, and boxes, and synthesis tools utilize these logic blocks to implement the desired functions, if not particularly configured to use certain internal hardware blocks. Such FPGAs additionally provide other sort of built-in system level blocks, including 18 qubit BRAM or block RAM, where each can be used as two independent 9 qubit memory blocks. The input of a BRAM is always registered, which means that the read and write operation are fully synchronous, and optional output register can be configured to reduce the latency of the circuit. Uh, BRAM also feature TDP through dual port, implying that there exist two completely independent address and data ports, which can be simultaneously used to access the content of the BRAM. Interestingly, the size of the address and data ports can be adjusted by user based on their needs. For example, a 9 kilobit block can be configured to have a 13-bit address and 1-bit data port, or a 10-bit address and 8-bit uh, output port. So uh, the address bit and the size of output is quite limited, and if you want to have 8-bit output port, only 10-bit address port is available. So bear in mind this number as we are going to use block RAM in our constructions in this paper. Masking with D plus 1 shares uh, is pretty popular due to the using minimum number of input shares, which potentially can lead to lower area overhead or uh, other implementation costs. It's also independent of the algebraic degree of the target function. Here I brought a simple example of D plus 1 sharing, which is a, uh, a two input AND gate uh, is masked which is a first order secure design. So in D plus one sharing, the mask variant is split into two parts and which uh, usually is divided by a register layer. So you can see the register layer with the red dashed lines. 
So we have component functions here. And the, the result of the component function should be stored in the register to avoid propagates of the glitches. Each component function should be non-complete, meaning that each component function should receive only one index share of each input variables. Then the result of the component function are compressed to form two output shares, as you can see here. I refer to this as a compression layer or simply compression in this talk. So we have a problem. If an attacker has physical access to the target device, she can monitor the power consumption or collect um, the electromagnetic radiation of the target device to recover the security information. The solution that our community came up with is to mask our designs. In masking, we randomize key-dependent variables during the execution of the cipher. To evaluate a mask design, probing model was proposed. In this model, a design is disordered secure if any combination of circuits wire doesn't reveal anything about the information. However, this model should be adjusted in hardware platform due to the phenomenon called glitches. Glitches are unwanted signal transition at output of the combinatorial circuit, mostly because of unbalanced path delays at the gate's input. Uh, to realize a mask version of a function, we should split a sensitive variable or a sensitive data into at least E plus 1 shares. Boolean masking is one of the most popular masking schemes in which the XOR of shares should yield the original value. So we know that uh, ASS plus consists of an inversion and an affine function, uh, which this um, inversion can be written as e to the power of 254 in the Galois field. So we would like to decompose this function into two QB functions, which means that we would like to decompose the inversion into two functions f and g, and each coordinate function of f and each coordinate function of g is at most cubic. So there are many, many solutions for that. And if you look at the ANF algebraic normal form of each coordinate function, uh, we will see that for both f and g, uh, we have all possible cubic monomials. So there is no difference uh, between the solutions. So for no particular reason, we chose n equal to 26 and m equal to 49. So now we decompose the S into G and F, where you can see the declaration of F and G here. So as I said, each coordinate function of F and G is cubic. And now the question is, I have a 8 to 1 cubic function for each uh, component function of this function F and G. And I would like to have uh, a two share mask form of this. And now the question is, what is the minimum number of component functions to realize a two-share mask for? So I would like to um, explain this problem with a simplified example. As you can see, we have function f with four input, which is a quadrant function. And I would like to have a two-share mask realization of f. So, of course, as I said, each component function should be non-complete. And we know that for the simple function, four component functions is enough. So if we take the AB as the first monomial, A0B0 goes to the first component function, A0B1 to the second one, A1B0 to the third one, and A1B1 to the last one. And we can do the same for other monomials without any problem. So I can show or simplify these, these four component functions into a table. So as you can see, F0 take O0, B0, C0, and B0 as, is, as its um, input list. And the rest of the component function is also demonstrated here. But when the F function gets complicated and has more monomials, then the question is, four component functions enough, which 
in this case there is no solution so what we should do we should add another component function to make sure that the shared monomials uh, can fit into the component functions so with five component functions you can realize a, a two shared mask which f0 f1 should be for example compressed for the first output share and for the second one <coughs> F2, F3, and F4 should be compressed. So this problem is uh, called set covering problem, which is a discrete optimization problem, and we have some method to solve this uh, kind of uh, problems. And fortunately, we have um, some tool write a program and and find a solution and I'm not going into the details but the optimal solution is 12 output shares from 8 bit to 1 bit cubic function which means that this solution is for um, worst case scenario so we have a very complex ANF uh, with 8 bit input and the algebra degree is 3 and if you have for example, a simple function, of course, better sharing with less number of output shares can be found. However, in our case, namely for F and G, uh, we have a very complex ANF, so we have to use the 12 output shares. So, as I said, we decompose the ASS box and basically the inversion. And for example, we take FAX equals equals to x to the power of 2 26 and if f a j be the j coordinate function of f so basically we have a coordinate function for f i can realize a two share mass form of f with 12 component function which i represent here as f i so f i is the the common function and i relate to the index of the common function and the j is the number of uh, coordinate function so each f i and j receives an input input x prime i uh, which is a mixture of input shares and of course it is non-complete and this means that regardless of the amf of target function and uh, the index share of each component function is fixed. So it doesn't matter which coordinate function we take, um, the component function input list is always fixed. So if I represent the output of a component function by uh, y, i, and j, then I can build this matrix, uh, which each column represents a shared um, two, ma two shares mask implementation or mask real realization of each coordinate function. So if I look at the, each row, I can look at it as a function of 8-bit input and 8-bit output. So you can do the same and for the second row and as I said the input of all of them are the same so I can represent it as x prime zero and call the function f prime zero and we can do the same for the next one and the, of course the last one. So to have each extended probing model I have to add some fresh masks. So I take six fresh masks and add them to the second half of the, this mask. So to uh, achieve also correctness and of course a glitch extended problem security, I add the same to the lower half. So as I said, the output of these XR should be stored in the register and then we have the compression layer which form to 8-bit uh, output shares and 
adding this fresh max is enough for glitch extended probing security. However, the output is not uniform. So to achieve uniformity, we add two more um, fresh masks uh, in the compression layer. And of course, the result of the compression layer should be stored in register before being given to the next function. So here you can see the general structure of the mass realization of the inversion. So as I said, we decompose the inversion into two qubit function f and g, and then we have f prime zero, f prime one to f prime eleven, which represents eight bit to eight bit functions, and each of which. Uh, is already demonstrated in the last slide, which is the row of um, void matrix. So, as I mentioned earlier, um, each row takes only one bit. So, if I go back here, you can see each row is represented by f prime 0, 1 to f prime 11. And as you can see, each row only take one bit fresh mass. So here on the R0, then only R1, only R2, to only R5 to this row. And we do the same for the next half. And then of course, reg uh, a register, and then compression layer and adding fresh mass to achieve uniformity. So here we have the same, we have eight bit to eight bit functions, one fresh mass for each of them here, and this is the second half which the fresh mass are repeated. And then we have two bit here in compression layer, and the result should be registered, registered here and then being given to the next function. And because the 8 bit fresh mass are supposed to be updated every cloud cycle, we can and connect the fresh mass of F and G to the same source as they are two clocks apart. So every clock cycle, the fresh mass are updated. So when um, the data or the, the, in the pipeline, uh, the data is refreshed here, then it is other fresh mass here. So we see no leakage in practice and actually it has no leakage. We can do the same for Xbox inverse here. So we can decompose it into two qubit function F and W here and do the same for them. For them. And the general structure is pretty similar to the inversion. So now we realize uh, the AS Xbox and its inverse and if we merge it into one construction, we can see here. So basically F and F prime and W prime are 8 bit to 8 bit functions. We have one bit fresh mass for um, each of them and I mean which is basically shared between them and we have MOS which has a control signal which means that we would like to apply the mask uh, the ESS box or its inverse. And of course here we have the same, we have G prime and F prime, which is 8 bit, 8 bit functions. We have one bit fresh mass and also one control signal for ASS box over its inverse. And as you can see, this construction can be seen as a 10 bit to 8 bit function. So basically 8 bit equals one bit fresh mass and one bit control signal. And as I said earlier, a VRAM can be configured as 10-bit address and 8-bit output. So each of them can be perfectly fit into one VRAM. So we can realize this with one VRAM and all of them in 12 VRAM and also 12 VRAM for them here. However, it has also TDP, a true dual port. So we basically not uh, implemented only one Xbox, but we have two Xbox with these 24 uh, BRAMs. So the general structure of the, our FPGA specific mask AS is here. So basically we have a control signal here, 
then we can decide we want to perform ACE encryption or decryption and depends on the next column or next column inverse or shift or shift shift row inverse is applied. So here you can see the result of the synthesis of our uh, constructions. As you can see, our design support both encryption and decryption, and the throughput is similar to other designs. The number of fresh masks is considerably lower of these designs, apart from this one. And the cost of the uh, employing VRAMs, the number of slices is lower than the state of the art. And if you do the decryption, then the circuit simplified and we need roughly 1,000 slices in s part on 6, um, which is a model and cost optimized uh, FPG and model in Xilinx FPGs. Uh, for a smaller FPGs, we also provided half pipeline and quarter pipeline, which are basically two column based design and column based design. And you can see the throughput is still good compared to the spike serial implementation. And the number of VRAM is quite low. And as you can see, less than 300 slices needed to implement our uh, column based encryption design. Um, as a matter of fact, we also provided the byte serial implementation. Um, just Bear in mind that the smallest FPGA in Spartan 6 family has only 600 slices and some designs like this one does not fit into this FPGA. Um, our design use only 200 slices, the cost of 12 BM, which already included in these FPGAs and the throughput is highest compared to the state of the art. Of course, if you don't need a high throughput or that much throughput, we can use this design, which is even tiny and small area overhead. However, the output uh, throughput is pretty low. So all nonlinear part of our construction means that the uh, S-Box construction is already verified by Silver under Gleech extended probing model which is dedicated to hardware platforms. Silver is a verification tool that does not simplify anything so it doesn't have false positive or false negative and already all our designs, uh, the S-Box construction um, and S-Box inverse construction all, is already confirmed by Silver um, because it's still not possible to evaluate the entire design we evaluated our design in practice by implemented in, implementing them in FPGA and collecting 100 million traces and perform the t-test. As you can see, it's always below the threshold. So here is the last slide. So at first, we presented a methodology to find the optimum number of component functions for sharing. And we already covered a to one bit cube function, but this methodology is general and can be applied on any VM function, with any um, algebraic degree, with any number of inputs. And we also minimize the amount of the fresh randomness compared to the state of the art and constructing a wide range of a design. Uh, which basically round base which supports both encryption and decryption uh, and encryption only one and also double column based and column based and also by serial implementation to cover a wide range of models and devices. We already outperform the state of the art and none of them can efficiently use BRAM and all of them should use uh, the slices. We uh, realized first order secure encryption and decryption together, and also the conducting verification based um, um, evaluation using silver and also experimental analysis. Thank you very much for your attention and watching this video.
please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any question or suggestion.